Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will show you how to use for each loop container in SSIS with a slight challenge. If you are a beginner and you are not interested in the challenge then you can still watch the video and I will tell you what things you need to ignore in the video. So this is my profile, IU13 plus years of experience on Microsoft Technologies. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is what is for each loop container in SSIS and how to use it. So recently I got a question from one of my subscriber Nancy Mishra and she asked that I am working on a project and I have given an ID, identity column as primary key to uniquely define the file path in a table and now I want that ID will show me in the table where the data is present. So just to show you like what kind of question it is, uh, she also sent me an image. So for example this is the image. Suppose we got the employee data that needs to be loaded. So the, this second table is the employee table. So we will load the data into the employee table from multiple files. So for example if we got three CSV files. So the data from all three CSV file will be loaded to this employee table. Okay. And now for each file that will be loaded we will have another table file info that will contain the ID which is the identity column in the table and the time when the file got loaded the file name and record count like how many records were loaded from the file. So suppose if we loaded three files then there will be three entries in the file info table. Now the challenge in this particular question is that this ID column this ID like 1, 2, 3 this ID should be loaded to the original table as well. In the table in which we are loading the data this ID should also be loaded there okay. So this is the challenge. So normally what we do that first we load the data into a table and after loading the data we insert a record into the file info table that uh, for this particular table these many records are loaded okay so because an entry is made into the file info table after loading the data so this id will be generated after loading the data now if you want that this file id should be present in the original table as well then what we will need to do that we should need to insert a record into the file info table before loading the actual data so as soon as the record will be inserted to the file info table the id will be generated we can get the id from here and then we can use that id to insert into the original table in which the data will be loaded okay so this is the challenge because we will insert a record first then the record count won't be possible to insert at that moment and also the time i want to update the time after loading the data into the actual table so let's see how we can achieve this particular thing using ssis so let's jump to the demo in my d files location i got three files employee underscore this timestamp 15 16 march 17 march so if i open the first file it contains 1000 records okay 1001 record and the first record is the header information and if i show you the second file it contains 500 records and if i open the third file then the third file contains 300 records so 1500 and 300 now let me open the ssms so this is my sql server management studio so this file info table will keep track of the csv files being loaded to the sql server table so the file id is of type int which is identity so it will be incremented by one every time a file is loaded and this will keep the file name actually the full file path and the record count will keep the track of the number of records loaded from a csv file and dated will contain the time when a file was loaded okay so this is the file info and we will create the employee table as well when we will create the ssis package so now let me open the visual studio 2019 so this is my blank ssis package and now let me just configure the package so now first of all let me just declare few variables here the first variable i will declare is file path i will call it okay and uh, data type will be a string and let me just give the initial path to this particular variable okay so i can just paste the value here now the another variable i will declare is uh, record count because we want to insert the record count to the file info table and now let me declare the third variable which is file id okay so as soon as a record has been inserted to the file info table i will select the file id from here that i will store in an ssis variable and once the data has been loaded from a csv file to sql server table i will update the record count and dated values later okay so that's why i am using the file id from here i have declared three variables here now let me just 
go back to the control flow and the first thing that I need to drag and drop is the for each loop container because we are going to loop through all the CSV files so let me just configure the for each loop container I can right click and click on edit and now from the collection I need to select the for each file enumerator and under folder I need to browse the folder from which I want to load the data so I want to load data from D files location and I want to load star.csv I want to load CSV files from the folder and then under variable mapping I can select the file path SSIS variables so for each iteration to the directory the current path of the file will be assigned to the file path SSIS variable now I can click OK and now we can drag and drop the execute SQL task into the for each loop container and uh, we can call it like uh, insert data into file info okay and then I can just configure this particular task I can open the connection here and I can select the connection the work database and then I can go to the expressions and SQL statement source I can open it alright and now let me just write the insert query here that I will later modify in the expression builder uh, insert into file info select file name so I need to put file name here and then record count so initially I will put null here and the date I will put null here because I will modify it later okay so I can copy this insert query from here and then I can put a double quote paste the query and the double quote and I will share all the expressions with you so you can just download it and you can use it while creating the SSIS package single quote double quote plus plus double quote single quote okay now I can just drag and drop the file path SSIS variable here alright so as soon as the record will be inserted I want the latest inserted records file ID so I can write select at the rate at the rate identity okay so this will return with the latest inserted ID from the file table so that ID I can use to update the records inserted and the time later okay as soon as I have done loading the data so I can click ok ok now in the general in the result set I can select single row and then I can click on result set I can click on add and I need to change the result set name to 0 and the variable is file id so that's good I can click ok now I need to drag and drop the data flow task into the control flow window so the beginners those who are just interested in the like loading the files they can ignore the execute SQL task all execute SQL tasks in this particular SSIS package and they can only look at the data flow task okay the for each loop container and data flow task that's the only thing that they need to do now I can just connect the execute SQL task with the data flow task and I can just configure the data flow task because we are going to read data from a CSV file so we will be using the flat file source so I can just drag and drop the flat file source into the data flow task and then I can configure that flat file source I need to make a new connection so that it can read data from a CSV file I will call the connection manager as flat file and I can browse the file the file is of type CSV so I will select CSV here and then I can select any file here and now I can click on preview to make sure that data looks good here I can click ok now I can click on columns click ok so we have configured the flat file source and now I can just drag and drop the OLEDB destination I can connect the flat file source with the OLEDB destination but before doing that because we want to know the number of records loaded from a CSV file to SQL server tables so we will be using a uh, row count here okay so I can use a row count here and then I can connect the flat file source with the row count and then I can just select the record count SSIS variable here I can click ok now there is one more thing that I also need the file ID to be inserted into the destination table the file ID that I selected from here okay so I need to create a column with the name of file ID so we will be using the derived column transformation here and derived column transformation can actually create a new column so I can just connect the row count with the derived column transformation and now I can configure the derived column transformation I will create the new column with the name of file ID and then under expressions under variables and parameters I will just drag and drop the file ID here so it will generate a file ID column okay from the file ID SSIS variable now I can click OK now I can connect the derived column transformation with the OLEDB destination and I can configure the OLEDB destination here I need to click new to create a new table here so my table name I will call it as EMP okay 
and you can see that this query is generated based on the metadata of the flat file source and then file id is also added here so i can click ok now i can click on mappings to make sure that all input columns have been met with the destination column so this seems good i can click ok now i need to just uh, make the flat file connection manager dynamic so i can just right click on it and go to the properties now under expressions i need to select the under property i need to select the connection string property and then i can just drag and drop the file path from the ssis variables now you can click on evaluate expression so this is the current value that is provided in the ssis variables now i can click ok ok so i have configured this data flow task so for the beginners this is done now i want to update the record count and the time in the file info table so i will use an another execute sql task and i will put it inside the foolish loop container and then i can connect the data flow task with the execute sql task i will call this execute sql task as update record count and then i can just configure this particular execute sql task from the connection i will select the workdb connection and then i can go to the expressions and i will select sql statement source here and i will open this particular query okay now what i want to do i want to update the file info table and in the file info table i want to set the value of record count from the ssis variable and i also want to update the dated value to current date time stamp and where file id equal to our file id that is stored in the ssis variable so i will copy this particular query from here and i will put a double quote paste the query and the double quote okay and i will also share all this expression with you so for the record count what we will do double quote plus plus double quote and then we will just drag and drop the record count ssis variable here because we are this is of type integer so we need to convert it to a string so we can write dt underscore wstr comma 12 now for the file id we need to use the file id ssis variable so i can just copy and paste it here and need to change the record count with the file id okay so this is file id okay now i can click on evaluate expression so this seems good click ok 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 so our ssis package is ready to be run now i can click on execute to run my ssis package all right so it is saying that invalid object name file info so the thing is actually i have yet not created the file info table so let me just create the file info table here okay so the file info table has been created and let me just try to select data from the file info table all right so file info table is empty as of now and let me try to fetch data from the emp table as well so emp table should also be empty okay so both the tables are empty so that's good now let me just rerun my ssis package all right so the package ran fine it should have loaded data from three to files so let me check the file info table right now so the first file loaded 1000 records the second file loaded 500 records and the third file loaded 300 records okay and now let me check the data in the employee table so you can see that data got loaded here and the value of file id is 1 2 and 3 as well so now let me check the count of the file id in the emp table so i can write select file id count star from emp group by file id okay so you can see that like for file id 1 we got the 1000 and for file id 2 we got 500 so this makes sense that like for the first file the record count is 1000 so for 1000 records the file id is 1 and for second file for the file id 2 we got 500 records so you can see that for second file we got 500 and for third file we got 300 so i think this is what we wanted from this particular video that this file id from the file info table should be inserted to the original table emp table thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much